you're about to see right now is do a food shopping at Tesco. We are not at Asda today purely because in the last video, if you watched it, Asda tried to keep me out for filming, so I thought the block's hot over there. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is come over to Tesco and do a quick food shopping video and show you what I'm going to get. If you enjoy the video, give the video a thumbs up because your boy needs them likes. Anyways, stay tuned for the video. All right, people, what we're gonna get now is a nice, Pizza. Per quarter of a pizza is 518 calories. This whole piece, if you were to eat it in one sitting by yourself, is over 2,000 calories. That's certain man, that's, I think that's my cutting calories. It's not my calories right now. If I was cutting, this whole pizza would kill me. Like, this this is it. So, this way you have to make smart choices. In Asda, you've seen me show you like some of the good pizzas. In this store, uh, I would say that if you just compare that ridiculous size pizza to this one, this one is, per half a pizza, is 245 calories. That is very, very low. Obviously, it's not elaborate, it's like a margarita pizza, but you can get chicken versions of each, about 300 calories per as well. And either way, you are saving so much more calories than if you had that one. So all about making smart choices. Don't avoid pizzas, just pick the right one. And uh, you're good to go, people. <laughs> okay, for those of you that often are like a super bacon fan, feel free to think about making the switch to um, turkey rashers. Uh, here, this is at Tesco right now. Per packet of turkey rashers, £2.40, which is quite expensive. If you go to Asda, they're doing, if you buy two packets for £4, obviously it's £2 each. If you want to make savings, but turkey rashers are very, very good. For those of you that may just love pork, uh, feel free to check out the bacon medallions, because these actually have less calories than the actual turkey rashers. Per two turkey rashers, is 81 calories. Per two of the standard bacon rashers, those ones are 108 calories, whereas actual bacon medallions are 51 calories for two slices. So um, feel free to opt for that if you're if you're a porky guy. If you like your pork, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now we're in the meat style for like chicken, turkey, whatever. If you happen to be in England and you live in like an ethnic area, they often um, have like a butcher section around the corner where the halal butcher in store will kind of like chop it up and give you more uh, cheaper meats and also they'll skin it for you already in the packet. So this is all the standard. So the ethnic section around the back, <laughs> I like calling it the ethnic section. If we turn this corner right here, you will find yourself various meats. This is the halal bits. Uh, for example, here is the chicken drumsticks. Uh, to be honest, in terms of price, it's not crazy different to the other one. It's like maybe 10 or 20 pence out. The biggest thing that's great is the fact that it actually has all the meat already skinned for you. So for those of you that obviously you're on the health wave and you're watching this video, I assume you want to be better with yourself. So taking off the skin reduces the calories and fat when you're eating meats dramatically. So if you want to know how to like build muscle or lose fat or improve your diet, this is a good way. We do also have some things that are already pre-seasoned for you, but in honesty, you can make this yourself and realistically be a lot less calories and obviously when they season it, as you can see, that is a lot of seasonings on the food. But in terms of the food that I would recommend, or the chicken I would recommend, because that's what I'm getting today, um, I would say the most tastiest is the thigh fillets. They have a little bit of more higher fat content, but that is what makes them actually juicy and succulent. Definitely get the ones without the skin, but they do still contain more fat than, say, chicken breast. Chicken breast has more protein in it, but like if you eat chicken breast like the day after you've made it, it tends to be a little bit drier, whereas chicken thigh fillets tends to be a bit more succulent. So that is what I'm actually going to get today. Um, also, my diet personally isn't always high in fat, so I can afford to have the extra bit from that. Um, other pieces I enjoy is like drumsticks and things like that, but overall, this section here is what I swear by because it just saves me having to chop the skin off and that really saves time and it's less ucky, like yucky and ucky having to take the skin off yourself. Are you rolling? You need to start telling me when we're rolling. People, just so you know, the camera person is slacking today, just as always. But right now, where we are, she's swearing at me by the way too. Where we are right now in the seasonings aisle, this is the aisle that makes food taste good. People always ask me, how does your food taste good? How do you know how to cook? First of all, it was trial and error, but it's trial and error in this section. So all the other YouTubers that you watch, so you just see, <coughs> there's salt and pepper here, dead thing. I don't know how they can sit there, sprinkle salt and pepper just on their chicken, that's it on their meat. And then after they go, oh, this is delicious. How? Come on, tell me how is that possible? You need to have a rich array of seasonings. You don't have to go overboard, but you need to like have a few seasonings to make sure it has a nice level of spice. And this is what really makes you stick to eating the same foods. Because when you're eating similar foods that are more healthy, you need to make sure that they taste good. Otherwise, you're going to rebound back to going to eat McDonald's or any sort of takeaway. Once you master seasonings and make the food taste good the way you like it, which is still on a healthy level, you got the key to gains. That is the key to diet gains once you do that. So right now I'm going to show you some of the key ones that I use quite frequent in case you don't know anything about seasons. I'm going to test them out and uh, then you're going to run to winner. 
Uh, some of the TJ approved uh, C um, spices are cayenne pepper, like it's basically it's like a it's like a key one. Uh, you've also got crushed chilies. If you love spice, if you love spice, people, crushed chilies is a must have. This is really hot as well, so I'm a big fan of these, especially when I make my Nando's type chicken. If you want the extra kind of the extra pop pop pop. Chili powder is another nice one, but to be honest, it's very similar to the cayenne pepper in my opinion. I normally mix between the two of them. I would never usually use both. Uh, by the way, obviously these ones here in the orange tops, these are the brand from Swartz, so they're like the really brand name. But honestly, the Tesco ones that you see are more plain. They're very close, very, only very few of them um, taste different. In terms of herbs now, the ones I always have is key. Is, so I feel like every sort of meat needs some mixed herbs, just to, you know, just, just for a little bit of flavor. And it also looks good on the meat. Uh, and one of the final ones I like using is black pepper. And also there's an all-purpose seasoning as well. And I also like using a lot of Jamaican seasoning, which I'll show you when I go into the World Foods aisle in this store. Mm, get back. Uh, is there any seasons that you use that you think is pretty decent for people to try out that I'll kind of... Paprika. Why do you like paprika? It tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> so Kareem, what else would you pick? What is your go-to spice and if you had to have pick one spice and one seasoning? Uh, cayenne pepper. Just look at the camera you speak. <laughs> Not clicking is that me? Cayenne pepper and then for my herbs and stuff. Mixed herbs, probably a bit of garlic salt. Depending on what I'm cooking, I'll use thyme and rosemary. And if I'm using fish, I'll use dill. And people, I'm an avid cereal eater. So what I'm going to have today is the Cheerios, the brand name one. It's on sale for £2. So why not? I don't want to like send all of you to this, but this is probably one of the best tasting cereals I've had in recent years. The calories is super, super high, but if you can play with the calories, it's a cheat day or a refeed day, and you just want to try something really good, I recommend that cereal to the max. Have you ever tried this one? No. Haven't yet. It's really, really, really good. I'll be having it soon in a future video. Stay tuned. Right, this is like the Jamaican seasoning section. Um, of all the mixed herbs, these are the ones I prefer the most. But if sometimes these aren't in stock, which is why I have the one that I showed you earlier on in the video. Also, jerk sauce. This is the authentic jerk sauce. Like you have the reggae reggae sauce, which is like Levi Roots is reggae reggae sauce, so reggae reggae sauce. But it's not like um, it might. It doesn't taste like normal reggae sauce. It's, I mean, normal Jamaican jerk sauce. It's just like a new one that tastes nice, I guess. Uh, someone asked me what is on the hell, what on earth is jerk sauce in the comments, and basically it's just Jamaican spicy sauce. Is the yeah, give them the different, give them the uh, give them the definition of what the jerk sauce is. The actual seasonings and spices and whatever go into making a jerk sauce. She's sending shots to Jamie Oliver, by the way. Jamie Oliver, come get her. She don't believe in your jerk rice. <laughs> and the number one thing that makes like proper Jamaican food like, have that that good kick is their fit, proper jerk seasoning. This is like the basic jerk seasoning. It has a nice little spice. If you want like super, super hot, you need to have the proper one, which is up here. So I'm hoping I don't drop. I'm not that tall. Ugh, freaking out. Ah, oh, Jesus. Okay. This shit right here, this stuff here is super, super strong. Do not use mad amount. I've seen like my ex-girlfriend once, yeah. Don't listen, thinking it was like just normal stuff. It ruined the, the whole meal. What you have to do is do like a tablespoon or a teaspoon of it and that is enough. Oh yeah, people always ask me like, how come the store's always empty when we're doing these food shopping videos? It's because we come at damn near midnight purely, so there's not many people running around in the background of the shops. So I do this for you guys. Literally, I should be in my bed right now. But I'm here. Well, what we're gonna have right now is the jellies. Uh, you guys have seen me talk about the Hotly jellies many times. There's four calories for, on average for each pot. Occasionally, you wanna know the flavors I recommend. There's apple and watermelon, uh, strawberry, uh, and raspberry. I'm not a massive fan of the black one on its own, but those are the ones that I would say are the best in my opinion. Calling all subscribers. For those of you that shop at Tesco, I'm actually asking for your help right now. When it comes to almond milk, I typically will have um, this one or the, these are two brands I normally have. Tesco recently have come out with their own one. It is this, this is their unsweetened one. If anyone's tried this, please let me know down below in the description box if it tastes good. I could test it today, but I'm not going to because I know this one tastes good. So I just wanna go with what I know for tomorrow morning when I have my cereal in the morning. So please let me know if you try the Tesco unsweetened almond milk. Does it taste as good as the normal ones? The reason I ask that is because Aldi have like a, an Aldi version and it doesn't taste anything like normal almond milk. It, it's not good. I only ever have that with protein shakes. So I wanna know if this is that or is it still taste normal? let your boy know. Also, what we're about to get as well, which is a great source of protein, uh, I normally don't have too many crazy eggs per day. Shit. Yo. It's the bitches. <laughs> anyway, people, what we're going to move on to now is some huevos. And for those of you who don't speak Espanol, that is eggs. 
As soon as I kissed it, she liked to tell me this came out right, the chick's butt, which is probably accurate, so I wish I didn't kiss it. But I was mimicking, you ever seen that? What's that movie called? It's cool Runnings. Yeah. Sanka, you're dead, and he kissed the egg. Throw, if you know, if you ever seen that movie, comment down below if you've seen Cool Runnings. By the way, in Cool Runnings, that's the worst Jamaican accent you've ever heard in life. Did not talk to you. Oh, I was scared that was gonna like crash. Walk with me, talk with me, come on. Okay, if you wanna know the easiest, the absolute easiest way to cut calories and reduce your calorie intake, it is drinks. People often drink crazy amounts of soda if you're American or just like fizzy pop for England. And it's like, that is like a massive amount of calories don't even think about because a lot of people only think about calories when they're eating. Drinking calories does count. For example, there's one guy in my workplace, every single day he drinks a two litre like bottle of fizzy pop every single day. And he's wondering why he's kind of, wait, let me rephrase that. A guy that I may have worked with, just, just disclaimer in case I get fired, drinks two, <laughs> drinks two litres every single day. And then they wonder why they kind of find it hard to like lose weight. It's because you're drinking all your calories. So what you want to do is, run with me, run. You're so dead, like, subscribers, you know she should have ran with me right then, right? Anyways, these are the keys to gains. These cordial things, these no-added sugar things are really good because all you have to do is add water. They taste flavoursome, so it's not like you're drinking just plain water. Uh, there is an abundance of flavours to choose from. You've got apple and strawberry, summer fruits, cherry berry, blackcurrant, lemon, apple and blackcurrant, orange. Orange is one of my favourite, and orange and pineapple. First up people, what we're going to get is some strawberries. But one thing I've noticed is that they've definitely started putting less strawberries in the packet. They're not even that that big and there's only like eight in the packet and it's two pound. Normally I would go for blueberries, but blueberries are a bit more expensive. Uh, so I'm going to switch it up and go for strawberries. But when they're giving you this little <laughs> in the packet, I don't even know if I'm making more gains or not. But yeah, strawberries for today. For those of you looking for uh, snacks that's not bad on calories, shout out to the subscriber that showed me these. These are party rings. Each little mini bag of these party rings is 80 calories, which is pretty low. For those of you that love breakfast bars, uh, this one obviously is known as the most tastiest one. Per bar though is 100 calories. If you want to have like a little bit of a tray, this one's 84 calories. Um, doesn't taste as sweet as the Frosties one, but that's a good like kind of option you can have. Cocoa Pops ones are also 84 calories, but I'm not a fan of those. I, do, I don't co-sign them, so they're not TJ co-signed. Uh, a snack I don't talk about often is jerky. I do actually quite I enjoy jerky. Uh, personally, for how much you get, I think the calories are a bit much, but they are quite tasty little snack that I often have at work. Another obsession of mine is honey roasted peanuts, but peanuts are super high calories. So if you do get them, just remember that a couple handfuls is more than enough because it's super high in calorie and fat, but they do taste good and they are high in protein as well. That was the sign that meant come from a high angle like an eagle. <laughs> this is giving the most weirdest uh, grocery shopping video I've uploaded on the channel. Anywho, people, what we are right now, we are standing in front of the rice cake aisle. Once upon a time, this was where I lived, uh, but I'm going back to my roots here purely because uh, I've been like, been like peckish lately, and when I get peckish like that, it's good to eat things that are low calorie. Alright, we're back, people. You know, me being a, a decent customer, I let you walk through the shop because I'm just that kind of kind hearted guy. Anyway, as I was talking about the rice cakes, um, this is where, like, when I'm really in a snacky mode, when like, it gets to like 9, 10 pm, I just can't stop eating. Things like this are good because they're very low calorie. For example, if you went for the very low end, which I rarely have, unless I have peanut butter with me, this is the lightly salty rice cakes. Each rice cake is 26 calories. This one, personally, I'd only have with peanut butter because it's really, really, really plain. It's uh, on its own, it's just like eating cardboard. It's really, really dry. Now, if you want to kind of up it a little bit more, uh, this is the salt and vinegar rice cakes from Tesco, the Tesco brand. These, in my opinion, are better than the I uh, haven't got the uh, Snacker Jack ones here today, but the Snacker Jacks version of this is very, very, very salty in my opinion. It's, it's really, it almost burns your mouth, it's that tangy. These ones are a good level. Uh, per uh, rice cake of these is 35 calories. This is currently my go-to, so I'll put this in the trolley now. Yeah. There is also other flavours if you have a little bit more calories to play with, which is you have the chocolate, you have caramel. The chocolate one is 62 calories. Personally, I don't really buy this one because this one tastes the best, but because of that, it's got a binge factor. Personally, I'm a very, I'm a big binger when it comes to food, so things like that taste really good. I try not have them in my house freely because I know what's gonna happen. If I take this back at home, I'll eat the whole thing in one sitting because I like the taste of it so much. Whereas things like the, the salt and vinegar one taste nice, but it's not to the point where I'm gonna go crazy with them. Uh, another one which tastes good, 
popcorn thins. They are a little bit drier, but what these taste like is popcorn. It tastes like a flat popcorn, so if you're a massive fan of popcorn like me, these I personally can eat on their own. Uh, I do prefer to have it with peanut butter once again because they are drier, but in general, the taste of this tastes better than the lighted salty rice cakes. Anyways, people, I feel like that is enough for this video. I spoke about it quite a bit. The main thing I'd say to take away from this video is the seasonings because that is what's overall going to impact um, your life. Once you learn how to season foods the way you like it, I guarantee you, your food and diet will go pew, through the roof. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> the sound effects today. Today's, uh, today's uh, grocery shopping video has a lot of sound effects brought to you by one other than TJ. Anyways, people, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. And stay tuned for the next video. And I'll see you when I see you. Stay getting gains. Peace.